afternoon. Happy Jackie Robinson Day, everyone. Welcome to our annual statue meeting. My name is Nicole Whiteman, and I'm the CEO of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation. Welcome to Dave Martinez and the Nationals. We appreciate you being here. 77 years ago today, Jackie broke, broke the care, color barrier in the game of baseball and changed the day and the life for all of us. We are forever indebted to Jackie and truly happy to be celebrating him today. To that vein, I wanted to introduce Io Robinson, who is Jackie and Rachel's granddaughter who has joined us today. Thank you so much for being here, Io. Jackie Robinson changed the game for all of us, and we probably can all talk about a way that he impacted us. I have a deep appreciation for the way that Jackie Robinson impacted me as an alumna of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Almost three decades ago, I was afforded the opportunity to go to college for the first time, first person in my family because of Jackie Robinson. I earned a scholarship from the Jackie Robinson Foundation that allowed me to attend Spelman College, but also propelled me into a future that I could have never imagined. The mentorship from Rachel and Sharon Robinson was immeasurable. The opportunity to work for the Jackie Robinson Foundation as Vice President of the Western Region for five years was priceless. And today I get to stand here as the CEO of the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation. Tremendous gratitude to Jackie and to Rachel for all that they have done for me and all that they have done for all of us. Today I introduce you as well to the next generation of our future leaders, our Jackie Robinson Foundation Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation scholars. Let's give them a round of applause. We're really happy that they are here with us today. Um, it is um, just really a proud moment to belong to this Dodger franchise, led by Stan Kasten and so many other greats who ultimately have gotten us to a place where we've contributed $4.3 million to the Jackie Robinson Foundation and the Jackie Robinson Museum back in New York. And we've supported 76 scholars just like the individuals that you see here today. And we're not gonna stop, that legacy will continue. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing um, our head manager. He is the first Af Asian American uh, of heritage, uh, manager in, in Major League Baseball, also the first black manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. We're just tremendously happy to have you leading our team, Dave Roberts. Uh, first off, guys, uh, thank you guys, uh, the Nats, uh, our guys here, uh, people around. This is a special day. Uh, not only in baseball, but in all of sports. And if you're talking about um, where eyes are at today, this is the epicenter of, of sports. And, um, you know, as we talk, you know, with the Dodgers doing something that's bigger than ourselves, living a life that's more important than ourselves, and uh, there's no uh, better person that exemplified that than Jackie Robinson. And, uh, you know, he had a big burden uh, in his life to be a professional, baseball player but to take on all this negativity this hate towards him his wife his kids and still persevere and so uh so we appreciate everyone being out here and understanding that uh we have a privilege it's an honor to wear this uniform our major league uniform that we do get to wear and also to help the youth and young kids uh through the jackie robinson foundation which is amazing and uh, so without further ado, I just want to, I'd like to introduce uh, the manager uh, for the Nationals, Dave Martinez. Hey, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Dave Roberts and the entire Dodgers organization for inviting us all here today. Um, this is truly amazing. Uh, I, can't, I can't say enough of what Jackie Roberts has meant to uh, not only the black community, but the Hispanic community as well. He opened the doors for many, many great players. He really did. Uh, and he changed the lives of many, including myself. I don't know if I would be here if it wasn't for Jackie. My idol, Roberto Clemente, definitely would, probably wouldn't have been around. So I thank him very much. He was, or exemplifies, what it means to have strength, courage, and passion. Think about that. What he endured was incredible. He had the dignity to do what he did when everybody was on his back. That's tough to do. As you guys all know, this game is hard enough. You know, what he did back in those days, I couldn't imagine being in that situation. So I thank him for that. I want to thank the Robinson family for allowing us to be here. Um, this is incredible. And to play here on Jackie Robinson Day, wearing number 42, is very, very special. So thank you. 
All right, to keep this moving, uh, we have a special guest here. We have two that are going to speak on, on Jackie's behalf and uh, personal interactions. And so this first person was a was a Dodger, played for the Red Sox, played in the big leagues uh, for, for decades, and arguably one of the greatest switch hitters uh, in history. And uh, he has, for the last 20 years, he still continued to pour into the youth, uh, lives in the valley, and trying to mentor and work on swings and talk baseball and, and talk uh, life with, with young men and women and girls. And so uh, he's a very, very good friend of mine, mentor of mine, all-star, all that stuff. And uh, I just, he has some great stories about Jackie and I just uh, really give it up for Reggie Smith. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Dave. Welcome, everyone. And thank you to the Dodgers for giving me this opportunity to be able to address the players especially the African-American players here, the fact that Jackie happened to be an idol. And when you have an opportunity to grow up eventually and, and meet your idol, it, it was very special. And I look at the things that Jackie provided for me as well as others. Gave a 18-year-old to leave home as a teenager and come home a man uh, to experience some of the things that he had experienced that made it possible for me to experience and become a man. I believe it was Roy Campanella who said that, you know, you have to be a man to play this game, but you still have to have a lot of little boy in you. But he allowed me to go and experience what it was that he went through to not be able to stay in hotels, not to be able to go into restaurants and eat, and doing all of that on a dollar fifty a day meal money that we received. And ultimately transition and know that what he stood for and what he represented, I had to carry that on. I had to also experience that. And it, I think I came out the other side okay. Also, it allowed us as African American players and Latin American players to be able to show that our SAT scores were as good as anyone else. And what that stands for, we were smart, we were athletic, and we were tough. We had to be, because that's what he represented. The sacrifices that he made and the opportunities that he presented to us and all of us, no matter what color, because he brought it all together for us to be able to play this little boy's game and do it individually, collectively. Also, it's part of history. Keep it in mind so that this game can continue to move forward the way that it has over the last years. And thankful, and be thankful that you're here and that you're able to do the things that you do day in and day out. Quick story, as I said, as a young man growing up, like the such a young boy growing up, the effect that Jackie had on every African-American kid, black kid, they call it, in my time they call this colored or Negro. At that time, when you played and you were with your teammates and team, Everything you had to do, you had to be quick like Jack Robinson. The way he played the game, that was an expectation of you as a player. And wanted to live up to that. And that's just that you became my hero. Well, I had an opportunity to 
eventually meet my boyhood hero right here at Dodger Stadium as we were honoring another great African American and Dr. Martin Luther King. It was a game that we played here. And as we were lined up on the field, there along and he was introducing all of the great, the many, many great players that at that time, the uh, Hall of Famers, he was going down the line and shook his hand and said, hello, Mr. Robinson, how are you? And he acknowledged me. Well, after the game, we were flying back to New York. I was going to rejoin the Red Sox because this game happened to be played during the season. Flying to meet the team in New York. Well, I'm on the plane sitting in an aisle seat, and down the aisle came Jackie Robinson. And he was being led by, because he was having a little problem with his eyesight at that time. And he sat in the aisle seat right next to me. And like kids would be, in the, and I'm sure you guys have experienced it yourself when a kid would come up to you and say you were his favorite player and he's a little nervous and everything. Well, I was a five-year major league player at that time and I was nervous. But I gathered the courage to say, oh, Mr. Robinson, my, my name is Reggie Smith. And he said, I know who you are and I know what you stand for. And that meant so much to me because during that time, whenever there was injustice on that ball field or any time I would, I would speak up because he gave me the courage to be able to do that. And I'm thankful for that. And with that, guys, good luck to you guys. Appreciate all that you do and thank you, Stan and Doc. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Reggie. Uh, thank you very much. Very heartfelt. Appreciate you. Love you. Uh, our last speaker, um, I haven't had a chance to meet him yet, but uh, you know, you look at a Wikipedia page and uh, he's got a lot of, uh, he's made a lot of impact uh, in our world, in our country specifically. So I'd love to introduce and hear from Dr. Harry Edwards. Dr. Edwards, thank you, sir. I know you're all sitting out here in the sun, and uh, I hadn't prepared myself to sit out here, so I'm going to be merciful as I can. I, I'll stop when I think you've suffered enough. Um, let me uh, begin by uh, making a statement that decades ago, the illustrious Mr. Jackie Roosevelt Robinson observed that a life is not important except in its impact upon other lives. It is all but impossible to grasp the full grandeur and majesty of a great mountain while standing in close proximity to it, as opposed to standing atop its heights. Likewise, we often fall short of uh, due uh, an enduring comprehension of the magnitude and totality of the impact and contributions made by some even among the greatest uh, of us, uh, and it becomes, until it becomes irrefutably dis demonstrable uh, in retrospect that we stand taller, we see farther, we reach higher, and we grasp more because we stand on the shoulders of giants. And so it is with Jackie Robinson. Though his footsteps long ago ceased to be counted among those of the living, um, the reality is owing to the content of his character, the caliber of his competence, competitiveness, and contributions, and the disposition and impact of his commitments to change both within and beyond the arena. His legacy to this day goes marching on. Jackie's incomparably remarkable and historic sojourn as a barrier shattering Major League Baseball player and his post career advocacy and struggle for freedom, equality, and social justice in society to this day stand as models of exemplary and enduring, enduring courage, uh, superlative performance, and strategic vision. Models that indisputably presaged and prepared the path of advancement for a then nascent and still evolving post-Civil War civil rights movement. With America still in the throes of a tumultuous and sometimes violent struggle 
over first class citizenship and human legitimacy a of, of African Americans, a struggle that had raged through post-Civil War years of Reconstruction and two world wars where America fielded segregated armies in defense of global freedom and democracy. As the first openly identified African American to play baseball in the major leagues in the 20th century, Jackie Robinson became the most vilified, targeted subject of verbal abuse and malicious, malicious treatments in the sports arena since Jack Johnson had the audacity to become heavyweight champion of the world in 1908. And like Jack Johnson, Jackie Robinson stood alone. Recalling his first season with the Dodgers, despite the pain and anger he must have experienced, in, 19, in his 1972 autobiography, I Never Had It Made, Jackie speaks matter-of-factly, matter of factly, uh, almost stoically, about how he played as torrents of racial slurs rained down from the stands and out of opposing dugouts, about how pitchers threw at his head and hit him with would-be brushback pitches, about how opposing base runners sometimes slid into his legs with their spikes up when he came when he uh, covered bases, and how despite his well-earned and established reputation for fiercely fighting back against race-based affronts indignities and slights, he kept his peace. In the spotlight, at center stage, in America's national pastime, Jackie Robinson found the wherewithal within himself not to fight back. He answered belligerent, bellicose bias with bravery and brilliant baseball. In 1949, Jackie Robinson crafted his best season and was named the league's first uh, uh, most named the league's most valuable player and was um, uh, believed um, that uh, 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 had won over opposing players who believed that black players lacked the necessities to play Major League Baseball. Players who decried Jackie's very existence on the field. He also won many fans over, many who he had called haters, among, along with uh, some mainstream baseball writers who had all but ignored his presence in a Dodger lineup except for including him where warranted in uh, summary box scores. Um, the, this media disposition was uh, uh, in large part because so many writers thought of Jackie's presence as being temporary, perhaps even short-lived, that he wouldn't have the courage or the stamina to put up with what he put up with on the field. They thought it was maybe a publicity stunt crafted by Mr. Ricky to drum up controversy conducive to boosting post-war fan interest and ticket sales. But over Jackie's 10 seasons with the Dodgers, he compiled a career batting, compiled a career batting average of 300, uh, 311 uh, and won several uh, more pennants with the team as well as the 1955 World Series. In 1956, in that season, uh, which was Jackie's last, uh, uh, he retired uh, subsequently. And in 1962, he was the first ballot inductee into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. Following retirement, Jackie Robinson became the first black president of a major corporation, and he became more active and outspoken than ever in the struggle for civil rights, uh, for, guarantee, for the guarantees of those rights, and for the uh, mechanisms of enforcement to be strengthened. In fact, Jackie had concluded when he, when he had, uh, that what he had achieved in Major League Baseball uh, could be uh, in, uh, in, instituted in the broader society as well, and by way of the same and similar methods of social change. And this was the message that Jackie sent every year in letters to every president of the United States from 1957 on, including 1972, the year he died. And these were not bromance letters, far from, far from it. Their tone often expressed various levels of dissatisfaction and sometimes outright rebukes of presidential policies and actions relative to the advance of civil rights. Jackie made it crystal clear that while he appreciated and understood the arguments so often uh, levied in response to his letters to presidents, that change could not be pushed too far too fast, that the perfect must not be made the enemy of the possible, for Jackie, it was no less strategically imperative that the possible not be made the enemy of the principled. 
and he was committed to freedom, justice, and equality, not just as a matter of constitutional promise, but as a matter of moral principle. In 1969, I had the privilege of meeting uh, Jackie, and we were involved in a panel discussion along with Bill Russell, the great Arthur Ashe, Johnny Sample, the NFL Hall of Fame defensive back, and of course, Jackie was part of that panel as well. Uh, he had endorsed, even while he was playing, a uh, 27-year-old pastor, 10 years his junior, who was leading an effort to desegregate public transportation in Montgomery, Alabama. In June of 1957, through, through coincidence, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, and Jackie Robinson were honored with honorary doctor degrees for Howard University as a result of their service, leadership, and sacrifice in the area of civil rights. While waiting in the green room during that panel discussion uh, in 1969, waiting to go on stage, uh, I asked Jackie if he thought that Dr. King and the civil rights movement really appreciated the monumental debt they owed him not only for his lifetime contributions and service in the baseball arena, but beyond, for his social change model uh, and that he had established and validated. In a profoundly modest, unassuming, and almost self-effacing tone and countenance, he turned to me and said, yes, I think they knew we were traveling the same path. The fact, of course, is that Jackie blazed and paved that path. Quite rightly, Dr. King praised and influenced Mahat, uh, the influence of Mahatma Gandhi uh, uh, had had on uh, him adopting nonviolence uh, as his guiding principle and direct action as his strategic method of civil rights. But most black people didn't know anything about Gandhi. They, they didn't study him. They didn't follow India's movement for independence from Britain. For them, Thanks to saturation coverage of his career in the black press, Jackie Robinson was America's Gandhi model. For 10 years before Dr. King ever came on the scene, and 15 years before the civil rights movement hit its full stride and expression in the sit-ins and freedom rides, Jackie Robinson had been practicing nonviolent direct action on the baseball field. But he had, from the outset of his baseball career, insisted on that black fans do the same. He spoke in churches, civil, uh, uh, fraternal, and sorority groups, and he worked closely with and supported the clergy and community organizers who trained black fans in even how to dress uh, for games. If you go and check out some of the old uh, Dodger baseball film, you'll see black folks sitting up in suits and ties and dresses and bonnets in their Sunday best because they, Jackie wanted to make it crystal clear to everybody. They didn't come to fight. They came to enjoy a game. And most specifically, they trained them in how to respond to shouted slurs and perceived bias by um umpires to bean balls and other attempts to hurt Jackie and to gestures uh, like throwing black cats on the field. As Jackie explained in his autobiography, I was so proud of the fans who came to my games and stayed orderly and calm. If I had lost my uh, head on the field and retaliated, if my teammates came out to support me, uh, maybe we would have had a rhubarb. But if fans had broken out uh, uh, if a fight had broken out in the, in the stands between black and white fans, it could have easily spilled over into the streets and developed into a full-blown race riot. And that would have been the end of Mr. Ricky's experiment because no city would have wanted me on the field with the Dodgers given such risk. So by 1956, over ten, for over 10 years, Jackie Robinson had already primed the pump for Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement. As, as much then as blazing and paving the path for the likes of Henry Aaron, Willie Mays, Bob Gibson, Frank Robinson, uh, Lou Brock, uh, Ricky Henderson, brother sitting back here uh, behind me, and others uh, of African other African American baseball players, right up through Dusty Baker, because baseball was the national pastime. Jackie's success encouraged professional football and basketball to continue their desegregation efforts. Lest we, and unless we overlook the fact, his success boosted efforts to desegregate, desegregate collegiate locker rooms, 
particularly in uh, the uh, process of uh, uh, putting uh, black players on the field and on the court, uh, a process which had theretofore been uh, consigned to moving forward with all deliberate speed. But Jackie's greatest and most enduring impact was the model he crafted and established that was germane and applicable to the broader society. As much as he was a professed and proven devotee of Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King was a protege and a principal leadership beneficiary of Jackie Robinson. In sum then, it is today my judgment and plea that, through, that though belated and long past due, and though no athlete has ever been awarded the honor over the signatures of the current commissioner of Major League Baseball, the National Basketball Association, the National Football League, uh, all of whom benef have benefited from Jackie's contributions over the signature of, of those of major civil and human rights organizations who drew strength uh, for movements based on Jackie, Wright's, J Jackie Robinson's example, those of as many uh, active and former professional athletes, coaches, and even former presidents of the United States as are willing to sign on to a letter. Uh, like Dr. Martin Luther King, a letter should be crafted and sent in posthumous nomination of Jackie Robinson for the Nobel Peace Prize. He deserves it. Now let me conclude with a final admonition and also a hope. We face some dark days ahead, and I, and I guarantee that, as has always been the case, some of the challenges and issues involved will eventually come through the, come through the arena turnstiles and over the stadium walls. There could be no more appropriate, fitting, and exemplary model and standard for, uh, than Jackie Robinson relative to managing these challenges, these issues that lie ahead with a focus upon inclusion, mutual communication and discussion, and a commitment to institutional means of resolving America's problems. The simple fact is that the lessons inherent, the lessons inherent in the impact of the life and legacy of Jackie Roosevelt Robinson endure today and are as relevant and consequential over half a century later as they were when he walked among us. We're still all his beneficiaries and so very privileged and blessed that he once passed this way. Thank you very much for your attention and I trust you found it worth your time. Absolutely, Dr. Edwards, it's worth our time. Thank you very much uh, for making the trip down from the Bay. Um, I want to thank um, the Dodgers, the Dodger Foundation, Nicole, your staff, uh, Davey, um, and most importantly, you players. Thank you guys for taking the time before a big league ball game. And uh, just know, I mean, from everyone, the message is very clear. Uh, Jackie had a vision beyond, uh, you know, what was right in front of him. So uh, thank you guys very much and uh, have a great day. We got a photo. John Sue wants a photo. It is because uh, when you have an opportunity to honor someone, your boyhood hero, you know, it's a special feeling. Do you think that players of today fully realize what Jackie Robinson did? I 
always like to think and hope that they do. Uh, you, you, you never know the, the contributions that he was. He did what he did so that he could change things and get them to the point that you didn't have to think about them. But at the same time, you have to remember back. It's, it's part of our history. Not only in sports, but it, it, it's over in, in our everyday lives now as well. Well, everything that pretty much that you do in sports uh, you know, uh, uh, transcends uh, anything else that you do for yourself. But more importantly, it's the microcosm of life. Baseball provides that for you. The ability to interact with people, to make decisions, trust those decisions, fail, and try again and become successful at it.